What's up, Psych2Go viewers? My name is Donna, and our first story comes from the video gaming world. Remember when we had some researchers saying that violent video games creates violent kids? And then we had another group of researchers saying no, 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 no. Then they started to argue, and there was this whole clash. Well, We've got some new research on the situation. But before we jump right into the news, I'd like to thank our sponsor, Best Fiends. Best Fiends is a free puzzle adventure game where you collect and build a team of fiends to defeat slugs by matching same colored objects. It's pretty addicting. I'm already on level 42. If you play or want to play, let me know what level you're on. This month, they're doing an Easter egg challenge where you can win amazing and rare rewards. If you beat all 16 challenges, you win a new bunny character. And who doesn't like bunnies? You can download the game free. I'll link it down in the description. And as a bonus, you'll get $5 worth of gold and diamonds for free in the game, of course. Back to the news. Ever since the emergence of violent TV shows, movies, and now video games, the topic of those things causing aggression has been hotly debated. A majority of studies have found violent video games linked to things like increased aggression and decreased empathy. There's just one problem. A majority of those studies were focused on short-term results. This means past studies typically had someone play a violent video game and write after the game is done, researchers would test aggression and empathy levels. What do you know, aggression levels were up and empathy levels were lower. But here's the thing, those same results can be found after any competitive or frustrating task. Whether that be not being able to solve a math problem or not being able to pass level 40 of best fiends. Because of this, researchers in Germany decided to test for long-term effects. Instead of requiring participants to play games like in past studies, scientists recruited people who already regularly play violent video games and people who don't play violent video games. Gamers and non-gamers were then shown a series of images that would evoke some sort of emotional response. For example, according to past studies, this image would not move a gamer as much as a non-gamer. Once shown the images, neural responses were examined via fMRI. Results show both groups having the same level of empathy, contrary to previous studies. Our last story comes from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, where scientists have developed an AI system that can detect a conversation's tone. So how this works is that users wear this watch-like device. The device analyzes audio, text transcriptions, and physiological signs. For example, more sad and negative conversations are usually associated with more pauses, monotonous vocal tones, and increased cardiovascular activity. The device takes record of this and is able to classify the emotional tone of a conversation with 83% accuracy. Now, the researchers of this system claim it's most useful for those who need some sort of social coach, people with Asperger's or anxiety. But imagine how conversations would be if everyone had a watch like this. That's all the news we have for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. We at Psych2Go would like to know your opinions and what you learned today. Do you think violent video games causes increased aggression? What do you think about this new device? I'll see you guys next time.